Okay, in this uh, third part here, we're going to continue the blockout, uh, the refinement of the blockout that I started with uh, in the last part. Now, um, the previous two videos, I've been doing some technical details. This one sped up a little bit more, just because it's the same process over and uh, we're doing the same things here. What I'm building here is a uh, small part for the steering. Um, and, uh, well, it's simply because this is a very simple mechanical steering there's a connection with a uh, a rod between these two arms on each side of the um, well the uh, wheel hubs those are connected to each other one side is steered and because the rod is connected to the other side the other wheel also steers I'm just simply creating uh, a simple shape here that's bent a little bit why is it bent just because it's more interesting to look at uh, a simple cylindrical shape not too many segments uh, move it into place there we go attach them and I'm going to attach that to that side also what's the advantage of that it's going to uh, also be included at the wheel hub at the other side because those two parts are instances now here I'm drawing a line uh, why am I drawing a line because it's really easy to edit the two points and uh, there's always a perfect connection of geometry between them I'm aligning these points nicely and moving them apart. Again I did that little trick by copying coordinates because I'm sure that, that my car's uh, symmetry axis is in the center at uh, zero. I can just copy a coordinate and paste the uh, negative on the other coordinate to effectively mirror uh, a points coordinate. So there we go, that's a rod that connects them. It's a, I've made it a little bit simpler than it is in um, in real life just because I don't get lost in modeling all these small details as I've mentioned several times before. So uh, look at my reference again, and um, yeah, these uh, the steering. There's a steering box, as you can see mentioned on this uh, site. The guy says it's a Corvair box. Corvair is a car brand, so that's where he uh, salvaged that little box from. I also need to add this little steering box. Steering box is a simple mechanical part that transfers uh, some gears in there that transfers the. Uh, rotational energy rotational um, movement of the steering wheel into a uh, pulling movement that will pull the steering and uh, effectively steer the wheels so I'm thinking that this sort of steering box that hangs beneath the frame a little bit hidden under the uh, exhaust is an interesting part to add I don't want to add too much detail to it that's why I'm going to keep it a little bit hidden at the bottom and uh, behind those uh, exhausts so this thing I'm I'm not gonna go extremely uh, into detail when creating this. Just gonna cre keep it uh, keep it simple. Um, it's a cylinder. I'm using six sides here. I might want to increase that. I'm just checking my ref more if there's more uh, more views of it. Apparently not. Well, I can get away with this. If you want to make this more detailed, if you're not sure how to do this, um, if you're not sure how to do any part. I feel confident creating this from the top of my head then please by all means look for more reference reference is always the key when you're not sure what you're doing so uh, here's a little extra arm I created I'll leave that steering box for what it is for a while I usually do that when I'm not too sure about a part I'm gonna add that one up there why am I doing that well this is the actual arm uh, this uh, arm that will get driven by the steering so if you can imagine the mechanics this arm will get pushed or pulled and since it's a, a bent arm it will rotate the wheel hub around that spindle which it's attached to the uh, to the axle and since uh, that will also move the second arm that is connected to the uh, second wheel hub through this well center steering arm st center steering rod both steering hubs will steer so uh, while creating this, it's, it's a bit tough to see, but I'm, I'm mentioning it to you now. I'm keeping in mind that if you want to have this car rigged and if you want it to work properly when used in a game, you need to think about uh, is the construction I'm building mechanically viable. I've uh, I've, I've had cars before from uh, from outsourcing companies that were modeled very nicely, but once uh, our technical artists tried to rig those cars, you could see that they were it was just not uh, viable in real life. The steel would deform and, and bend and, and break in real life even because uh, for example the uh, the suspension didn't rotate along the correct uh, correct points. So 
if you want to make a car that's uh, realistic and viable make sure you create so, some you create the steel parts so that they don't deform or break if you would uh, rig them in the same way in real life you see there's this little uh, little arm part I'm creating I'm not saying my my car wouldn't deform completely but it if it did uh, it would really not be very noticeable and would come across as uh, believable so you need to really need to keep that in mind in in large terms it needs to be believable and needs to work in real life and key for this is using your reference uh, once again if you're new to this also you need to find more reference because I have some experience creating cars I know how some of these mechanical components work if you don't then you need to uh, need to find more reference so anyway here's the the next part we're gonna attack the grill I uh, actually put so put quite a lot of thought in this thing. You can see I'm I'm gonna be looking for my design a little bit here. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is just take this block out mesh and clean it up a little bit, add some edges that work more decent. There we go. I want I want to avoid having uh, too much non quads in there, so I'm just adding more edges, connecting them up so I nicely have quads everywhere in my uh, my mesh. So there we go, space those out a bit more. Yep, that looks better. So I had some tries up there at the top. My, I might get rid of them later. Uh, you never know. I want my grill to be quite rounded, not too squarish like uh, the typical tea bucket grill. See, there we go, re getting rid of my uh, my non quads. Well, I want the grill to be nicely rounded. It has to have a nice rounded design shape to it. There we go. It's looking good. Uh, and now I'm just looking for the the correct rounding, something that's aesthetically pleasing. This is I'm not really using reference for this. Uh, I'm just creating something I think looks nice. Some some parts of this car you just yeah you just do whatever you like here because uh, this is like how do you say it? it's part of the face of the car. So I really want to have put my my own type of design in there. Uh, if you're creating this yourself, make sure you have nice flowing lines so it doesn't look too bumpy. You can go for a squarish one. I think the original um, 4T uh, radiator grills were quite quite boxy. So if you want to go for one of those, yeah, do so. But I don't really like the the boxy look of um, of these things. I want it to be nice and round. There we go. Adding some more edges just to refine things. And just some slight tweaking, uh, nothing too complicated. And um, because I probably want this thing to be uh, mirrored using symmetry, I'm just going to add another edge in the center there. And I want this little sort of, uh, how can I, how do I call it, a bulge type of thing in the center. I'm not really sure how to do it, and you can tell. I'm messing around with the geometry a little bit here. Not too sure what I'm doing here. Um, just checking things out a bit. Looking for geometry that might work. It's this sort of bulge fin thing in the middle that I'm looking for. See, I'm cutting some crazy geometry here just to, to see what works. It's a really unconventional type of shape, and I want to see if it works. But as you can see, <laughs> This really isn't isn't what I'm I'm looking for too much. Uh, gonna mess around a little bit more, see if I can if I can get something worthwhile from it. But I'm starting to doubt that this is gonna work. Yeah, there you go. Undoing everything. I'm just gonna gonna leave it at that. Keep it simple. See, this is one of the keys also when you're modeling flowing, um, design smooth parts is keep the geometry simple. Don't go too crazy on things. I want to keep your, your wireframe and geometry simple. If you're going to add too much edges, too much cutting, it's just going to complicate things and it's going to make it tough to edit afterwards. So adding another cut there. This is mostly to um, to be able to add a little rounded edge for the uh, the extrude at the center of the um, of the grill. You can see I'm, I'm only doing it on one side. reason for that is uh, I'm going to I'm going to use a mirror uh, symmetry on this later. So there we go, selecting these edges. 
and you can see I created a nice rounded corner at uh, the bottom also okay so this is the center part that I want to uh, extrude in all the way like that there we go delete that inside a little bit messy welding there but hey it doesn't matter you're not really gonna see it there's gonna be um, a mesh in front of that so uh, I don't really need to worry that much about these things uh, just welding these parts up you can see it's a little bit sloppy there it's not exactly planar so I'm using a uh, make planar the make planar button very handy for this kind of thing so yeah this shape is is going where I like it but it's, uh, it's a little bit too too blocky and not rounded off enough so I'm adding this one there gets rid of the try issue I have there connecting this one up because it's sort of like like I mentioned the mid poly mesh there's no real definition if this is going to be the high poly or the low poly so I'm just keeping it in between not too much crazy optimization that would mean trouble for the uh, for the high poly but not too much edges so that I would need cleaning up work for the um, for the low poly yeah, I like how it's a little bit pointy in the center I might need to tweak that a little bit more Let's see moving these around a little bit there we go to get that round and there and I'm gonna try to align these like that so it's flat at the back but it has a curve at the front I, uh, I like that you know, that's a little bit too pointy so I need to move these edges up also the pointy shape is, is just more aggressive it's way more interesting to look at I could keep it flat but my my sense of how I would how would I call it sense of design tells me that I need to make the shape a little bit more interesting by making it a little bit pointy so tweaking the cage you see I just deleted half and added a, a symmetry modifier it's always easier to do that you save yourself some work cleaning up the mesh uh, as you can see I'm looking at this this wireframe of extreme angles and I can tell that some of the lines are a bit wobbly so answer to that is tweak the points until they smoothly run into each other uh, uh, moving these apart why because I'm thinking about my turbo smooth and I can see that my regular low poly smoothing is also messing things up a bit here uh, I actually need to add some buffer edges in the center to keep things uh, to keep things sharp there because as I said I want a sharp line in the middle it's just gonna look way more interesting and there we go you can see there's a nice crease in the center it's a little bit too much polygons for a low poly but that's nothing we can fix what I'm doing here that's very important it's the first time you can see me do this I'm changing the try windings so they all run in the same direction this is to fix smoothing problems on um, really curved objects you'll see me do that more often when we get close to baking but uh, don't keep, don't pay too much attention to it you can do it later but I'm just mentioning it already so you know what I did there I was thinking about adding a little um, rounded edge around the open side of the uh, radiator so I'm just creating a spline there how do I do that I selected the edges and there in max there's a create spline from edge so you can uh, create splines out of your edge selection very nice because uh, if you do it otherwise you just have to yeah stupidly follow your edges exactly with uh, your spline which is just stupid work yeah my plane was subdivided here I need to go back change that there we go aligning the orientation rotate 90 degrees and there we go and I'm just aligning this this uh, simple plane is going to be my uh, my wire mesh I'm gonna add an opacity map on this in the final uh, low poly but that's still a long way to go so mirror it the same way there we go and add a smooth modifier on top of the symmetry that creates a nice sharp gap between them look at that way more interesting than a flat uh, radiator grill so we've already given the car uh, a lot of its face here already the the lights are there the grills there let's see what's up next 
person needs to judge this a little bit by moving around. Yeah, what you of course can't miss on a, a typical old car is um, the filler cap for the radiator. Because um, you might not know this, but a radiator is a um, system for cooling the car engine. How does it work? The uh, the blocks around the cylinders are filled with water. The water doesn't meet the actual cylinders. It just runs around it in a closed system. And this closed system circulates water from the radiator, which is a block that sits beneath the grill. And uh, the water, which is hot from the engine, runs to, to the radiator. The radiator cools this water down. How does it cool it down? Well, the car is moving, so uh, air is blown into uh, into this radiator. Why? Because the car is moving fast and because the radiator is located at the front. And when this water is cooled down again, it moves back to um, the, uh, the cylinders. And so this is just a looping system that heats and cools water to keep the engine cool. Now at the bottom, there's a little cap where you can uh, check the water level and refill it in case it's leaking. So it's just a small detail I'm putting on there. I don't think all hot rod grills have this, but I just prefer it. And what I'm doing here is I added a little cylinder. And to make it more badass metal, I'm adding this uh, Celtic cross type of thing on top of it. Yeah. So just uh, I just use simple splines for this. It's really nothing complicated. So there we go. I really like the look of that. This is a cool detail. All right. So what's up next? Let's see, creating a little box there. Yeah, what I'm doing here is, um, you might have seen this in my very first video, the introduction. There was a picture there of um, two crossed wrenches. And these two crossed wrenches are a, a typical hot rod symbol. Um, here, I'm looking for a crossed wrenches. You can see I'm not really finding all that much about it. Wrench cross, no, not too much. Uh, anyway, I'm just going to continue. Nothing too interesting found there. And uh, well, as you know, wrenches are tools for working on cars. And um, well, since it's a typical C symbol for the hot rodding scene, I'm just going to add one to my car. It's a it's a fun detail. It's something different. It makes my hot rod unique. It makes it uh, more interesting to look at. So these are wrenches with a. Uh, a closed uh, close opening at the uh, at the bottom and an open one at the top. So I'm just using a simple uh, tube primitive to fix these up. There we go. I'm keeping it keeping it simple, keeping it low poly. Don't want to make that too complicated. Scale these together a little bit. Scale it like so. These points need to be scaled in also. There we go. That's starting to look okay. All right. Yeah. Ridge cross is interesting. Attach them together, make it gray. Make a second one. And this one I'm making a reference. Why am I making it a reference? This is one of the rare cases you want to use that. You see, it's still based on the original uh, wrench mesh, but I'm adding an edit pulley on top to which I'm making changes to its prototype shape. So if I would change the original wrench, the, um, the reference would change also, but the, the extra changes I made in the edit pulley modifier on top would also be applied to it. So if I suddenly decide that hmm, this wrench is too long, I change the length. The second one will also change length, but it will stay as small as uh, as I've made it before. So anyway, here's another thing I'm making. These uh, Ben-Hur type spikes at the front of the wheels. It just looks badass, so I'm creating it. Uh, really simple, just some, uh, some cylinders. Make the shape a little bit interesting. Uh, just some badass bikes for if they have a, if this hot rod has some enemies driving next to it, you could just bump into them and uh, blow their tires or whatever. Set the smoothing groups. You can see that there's a little bit of a problem with the smoothing groups there at the front. Um, this is just something in in low poly you can't really get around. In high poly it's also a problem. If if everything runs together in one point as a cone. It's a bit tricky to fix, so uh, I'm looking for a solution for that, but not really finding it. So uh, I think I'm just gonna leave it at that. 
need to set the smoothing grooves for the uh, inner part. Make some manual tweaks also. This one needs to change as well. There we go. Yeah, those are looking okay. All right. So, looking for the next thing to change. If I go into my reference folder and um yeah, I need to move the position of this thing a little bit. You know, see it's never too late to make rather drastic tweaks to your complete layout. It's better to do it at this stage than to realize it later. That's the whole purpose of creating this block out. You want to be able to shift proportions and things around in your design before you make things too final. That's why I'm not diving straight into uh, a low or high pulley right away. I'm making this intermediate model that serves as as a, a quest for the design to finalize things up to make sure I'm completely satisfied with everything. And still then, there, there will probably still be things that I'm missing, but at least I know that I'll have tried uh, to keep it as best as, uh, as possible. So just adding some detail to the wheels here. There are these chrome rounded hubcaps on the inside. I'm just recreating these. I matched the number of segments to the uh, the outer part. Deleting that inside. Scaling this flat. Changing the color and moving it to the inside. There we go. I'm just keeping this separate because, well, pff, it looks cooler if I have it in a gray color. Those are supposed to be chrome, so... Alright. See what's up next. Looking at my reference. Hey, yeah, there's this interesting fuel tank at the back there. I got this car from uh, bushandbush.com, which are apparently two brothers building this uh, pretty cool aluminium hot rod. But the problem is there aren't really a lot of pictures of the uh, the fuel tank at the back. I really, really like that fuel tank. I mean, it's unique. I haven't seen it before. I like the way how it's strapped to the back, how it has this uh, bare aluminium look. I really want to get the same thing in my, uh, my hot rod. Uh, that doesn't mean you have to do that too. Just look for your own uh, kind of thing you, you like. Um, there's, there's other ways of doing this fuel tank. You can just see them in, in the pictures I'm looking for here. I'm just looking for a tea bucket fuel tank, tea bucket tank, whatever. Lots of cool stuff. See, for example, th these guys put in this sort of uh, trunk at the back. This guy painted it black and it's a lot smaller. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, I don't, I don't like the look of this one as much as I like the uh, the bush and bush tank. So uh, anyway, one one thing's uh, for sure. I need to uh, add this little dimple in the center part. It needs to be around a little bit more. I need to add these straps around it. There you go. I'm just simplifying the geometry a little bit. I don't want it to be too crazy. Move that in and change the smoothing group. There we go. That's what I was talking about. It's a lot more interesting than just a dome-shaped end. Chamfer these parts because, oh, anyway, it's cooler to have it a little bit rounder. It makes the shape more interesting. And also, I'm doing this because I'm thinking about normal maps. You don't want to have really hard edges. You always need to have things a little bit more rounded than you might do them on instinct. So anyway, I just made one half. I'm going to have to use symmetry on that. But first off, I want to create the uh, the straps around it that keep the tank into place. And I want to try and match the number of sides here. There we go. 16 sides. It's a little bit thicker. delete the inside because I don't need that just to simplify things this is probably not going to be in my low poly but I'm deleting it anyway to not add any overhead stress on my computer really really annoyed that these damn images aren't high res enough I could get into their open directory sometimes you need to be creative when looking for uh, reference I'm just checking if there's anything more in here no 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 nothing 
best I have are these overlit images, which is really too bad. So, I guess I'm just gonna have to do it for myself. Interesting page, by the way. I read their complete story uh, while not recording any videos, so it's always cool to read up on the subject you're working on. I need to mirror this thing over the x-axis. There we go, two straps. See how it's a lot more interesting already, the shape? And now I'm doing the uh, mirror, as I talked about. Add an edge in the center, delete one half, and simply add a symmetry modifier on top. Yeah, problems here. Since the uh, pivot point wasn't at zero, 0, I need to move it manually. Not a big issue. Linking things together. There we go. Alright, as you can see, we really added a lot more character to a hot rod again, especially with the grill. The tank at the back is a nice detail also. I'm just checking what more I can do. Um... Well, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not going to touch the engine yet. Also, once again, this is me checking everything from uh, every angle just to make sure I'm satisfied with uh, all the parts I've created. Little chamfer here. Shapes were bumming me out a bit. Make the smoothing groups more interesting. Try to have them match each other. So things smooth into each other nicely. And yeah, from the front, it's looking okay. I mentioned it now. I'm a, a little bit bothered by the uh, the two superchargers, especially when you look at it from the front. It looks like two bunny ears. So I'm not too sure about those anymore. So anyway, what do I see here? Some more detail hanging on the bottom. Trying to get a look at that fuel tank. There's there's some some hoses and tubes running down from it. Might have to add those later. I'll see about it. Um, checking this page again. I'm really bothered that I don't have enough reference for it, but hey, nothing you can do about that. And yeah, I decided that the front part needs to uh, go in a lot more. It's too wide there. So I need to change that. This is sort of the thing you, you notice from just rotating around your model, looking at it from every angle, trying to get things to look exactly like you want it. You really need to pay attention to these small details if you want to achieve high quality work. I mean, it's, it's these these things that make a difference. Um, otherwise all these tiny little inconsistencies start stacking up. So anyway, that was it. Um, 